Welcome to GMI Connect. This podcast is under the helm of Apostle Dr. Glenn England and Prophetess Karen England, founders of Joshua Ministries International, a place where God's presence is evident. Don't forget to subscribe for more uplifting, thought-provoking, and insightful messages. Be blessed. See, one of the things is that when the Holy Spirit inspire you to preach a word, he's not just sending a message to make you happy. He's not just sending a message that you can just feel good, but he's sending a message to bring awareness. Because sometimes one of the things that we got to understand that we have to always keep that shield up. Always, not some the time, all the time. Because a shield is a very important thing. It's, it's, it's something that, that protects us from all the onslaughts and the chicory of the devil. So today the message is to keep your shield up. Keep it up. Watch how you hold your shield and how you present your shield. Because sometimes you can use your shield. Sometimes your shield is there, but it don't have the effect because of the position your shield is. So you can have your shield half mat, where your shield only protecting the lower part of you, but and the enemy can hit your heart, hit your head, and hit some. But when you got the shield right before you, it protect you. Come on, tell your neighbor your shield is to protect you, and it's also to push your enemy off balance. Yeah. Come on, come on, you ain't you ain't ready to hear this. So I don't know if you understand this prophetic word that I'm here about to release to you today to cause you to understand there's some type of fight taking place but if you don't position your your shield right the enemy will get you he will win the battle because of you low your shield you ain't no time to low your shield can you touch somebody and say ain't no time to take a ease ain't no time to just relax especially sometimes we what do happen to us uh, let me tell you this my son uh, sometimes what happened to us when God God start to give us bread, yo. We like to go in a place called relax. We like to go in a place where we take in our ease. So, but listen to me. When God give you a bread, yo, you got to keep that shield up. Yeah, yeah. Come on, tell your neighbor, say keep it up. Come on, say keep your shield up. Don't let, don't let your shield down. Come on, I, I'm going to want my daughter to read something I wrote by inspiration of the Holy Spirit that you need to be keen up. Tell your neighbor this ain't no time to be naive. Come on, you ain't hearing me this morning. This ain't no time to be naive. This is a time that you got to understand you're in a war. And when you're in a war, you better set your shield right. Come on. See, you need to set your shield because why? I'm in a war. You don't let your enemy push you back. You push your enemy forward with your shield. When a warrior is in a warfare, a warrior don't drop his shield. He Keep it up. Tell your neighbor, say, keep that thing up. Come on, I come here. I come here as a, a messenger, a postman to somebody need to hear this message. I come to tell somebody, you better watch out. The enemy is coming against you, but if you guard yourself with your shield, it cannot penetrate your heart. Listen to me. Come on, somebody. I want somebody to hear. I want somebody Somebody can get their breakthrough. I want somebody to get their deliverance. I want somebody to get their healing. I want somebody to get their peace. I want somebody to get their joy. Well, when you read this, I want you to listen. Listen carefully. Read. There are people who will speak good to you, but inside of their hearts, they hate you. Their imagination is so wicked against you that you have to cast down what they are thinking of you. Because if you don't do this, the image in their mind becomes words of them out of their mouth. And we know that words are powerful. Hey, let me teach you something. The Bible says we must cast down vain imagination. And we always focus on that we cast down vain words, but you also have to cast on the imagination in other people's mind towards you. Amen. Come on, somebody. You got to learn to pray and say to God, that person 
person, that imagination, that wicked device about me. I pray that you move it from their mind. Because if you don't move it from their mind, their imagination also comes words. And words are effective. Words are creative. Because somebody can think something and start confessing against you. And it's witchcraft. Amen. Come on, you ain't want to hear this this morning. I want to show you that even in scripture, the David, the psalmist David, asked God for his divine protection. So listen to me. To be protected, you better be shield up. Can you never be shield up? Guard yourself. Read. Let's look at what the scripture says about what I'm teaching you today. The psalmist David asks for his name to be removed from his enemies. Bosom. Psalm 31 and verse 4. Keep me free from the trap that is set for me. For you are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my He said to keep him. Keep him what? <laughs> Protected from what? The trap. Listen to me. The enemy have traps. But you can ask God to shield you. That the trap, the desire, the plan that he, the devil got towards you, using people, will not work. Tell your neighbor when you got your shield up, all the wicked devices and plan can work. What they come after one way, it will go on seven way. You got to understand when you got your shield and they release the evil darts and the fiery darts, what takes place? The thing that hits your shield will bounce back. Oh, you got to understand. You wishing me bad, it might bounce back to you. You judging me wickedly, it might come back to you. Because why? I'm guarded. I'm shield protected. I come to tell somebody, Jesus got your shield protected. They're planning what they're planning. But guess what? It's not going to work. You know why? My shield is up. My shield is up. Come on. My shield is up. My shield is up. Is up. Is up. Say, neighbor, neighbor, if you speaking bad against me, you better watch yourself. Say to them, say, neighbor, I am shielded. The Lord God encamp around me. He got angels encamp around me. What you planning and desire for me, it ain't going to work. I don't care who you call. I don't care what you do. I don't care what you say. I am Come on, I am. I am. Say, neighbor. Neighbor, I am not in this alone. Come on, say, you might look at me like I'm in it alone, but you don't know I am. See, in front of you, my son is showing a physical shield, but he really in the realm of the spirit. Verse 5, 11 say, read. The arrogant have hidden a steam for me, 
They have spread out the cause of their net and have set traps for me along the, my path. I said to the Lord, you are my God. Hear, Lord, my cry for mercy. Sovereign Lord, my strong deliverer. You shield my head in the day of battle. Do not grant the wicked their desires. Lord, do not let their plans succeed. Those who surround me proudly wear their heads. May the mischief of their lips engulf them. May burning coals fall upon them. May they be thrown into the fire and my repeats never to rise. May slander was not be established in the land. May disaster hunt down the violent. No, this is why I'm saying to keep your shield up. There are folks who hate you because of the counsel of others. Let's look at the armor of God. Listen to what the Bible says about having yourselves armed at all times. Any foolish thing can weaken your armor if you let it happen, such as sin. Many believers lower their shield when it seems like the battle is over. Say to your neighbor, it's not time to take an ease. It's not time. Come on, say it's not time to take an ease. Stay shielded. See? The enemy, if he couldn't... See, the shield is so important with the sword. See, the shield has its place. Because when the Bible talks about putting on the whole arm of God, God don't want the enemy get, get um, be able to penetrate, touch your, your breastplate, touch your belt, mess up your foot, you understand, and mess up your head. This God, the armor is just the secondary thing. But God wants you to be so shielded that the enemy cannot penetrate. He can bypass your shield to hit your armor. So a lot of us focus on the armor, the clothing, but we're not going to focus on the shield. Because when you have your shield, God don't want the enemy to be able to penetrate. Amen. Okay. You understand me? Yeah. You should supposed to be a so shield that the enemy don't able to penetrate your head and cause you to worry. He, God wanted to be so shielded that the enemy ain't got able to penetrate your head and cause anxiety, depression, cause you to become suicidal, cause you to be worrying and panicking and all these things. See, when you got up your shield, these things ain't supposed to come close to you. Your shield is important. Yes. Because your shield is a battle, a battle ram yes. against your enemy. Yes. See, your shield is to protect you. Yes. Come on. Your shield is supposed to also push your enemy. Yes. Because what? Let me get this revelation to you. See, when you push your enemy, you can cause them to go off balance. Yes. Anything that goes off balance, you got power over it. Yes. If you understand the word wrestle, and when I look up the word wrestling, it speaks of I'm getting your opponent off balance. Yes. My God. Come on. Because a man of balance can't show a good punch. A man of balance can't think right. A man of, come on. Why did you think the Bible said be sober minded? Meaning to be conscious and aware of your surrounding. So when you got your shield up, you are sober minded. You are clear to make decisions. You are clear to know what you want and what you can refuse. Yes. Yes. Come on. Wow. See, when your shield is done, this is why the enemy use these type of darts. Man. One, the dart here Junkin. is junkiness. A person who is junked cannot relate properly. So junkiness is a way to attack the shield when the shield is done. Envy, fear, these all can affect you when your shield is on. Yeah. Yeah. Hatred. Somebody hating on you only can affect you when you don't know who you are. When you shield up, you that can affect you. Come on now. Come on. Hatred cannot enter your heart. Strife, loss. Strife. Loss. Witchcraft. Fornication. Listen to what the enemy, listen to me. David dropped his shield. That way the enemy affect David. And listen to what he affect you with. He want to affect your generation with. One day, David went armorless. Shieldless. And he was positioned in a place that in that 
time he was out of place because he was supposed to be somewhere else. Yeah. Don't let the enemy take you on a full journey. Yeah. So the Bible said David on the top of the house top he saw a woman naked. Because his shield was down, he no the Bible said because of your, your own lust, your own desire, you fall in sin. So David fall in sin because his shield was down. Yeah. He was supposed to be in this army fighting the, his enemy fully armed. The king have his shield. Amen. Tell your neighbor. Do not let the devil catch you in a position being shieldless. Come on, come on, you're ready for this. I want you to understand what I'm trying to articulate to you today is that you have to understand clearly out of position gives certain rights. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. Out of position cause the enemy to stop your blessing. So you ask, well, everybody getting um, restitution. What happened to me? Are you in your right position? Because God promises is yeah and amen. Yeah. God promised I will bless you. So when the enemies, one of these titles might not be up here where you're struggling with. It could be unforgiveness. It could be bitterness. It could be gossiping. Anger. Or touching um, leadership. Pride. All these different things. Listen to me. A lot of folks think because I don't confess what the person's saying, I'm all right. But if you harmonize in what they're saying, it can affect you. You because non-verbal speaking is still verbally speaking. Are you hearing me, church? So the devil wants you to drop your shield that he can devote your life. But tell your neighbor, shield up. Come on, come on, say neighbor, shield up. Come on, touch your neighbor and say, shield up. <laughs> some, of need you, some of you need to do it in the realm of the spirit. Ah, shield up. Say, they're trying the bad word. Shield up. They're gossiping against me. They're trying bitterness. They're trying hatred. They're bringing loss. Come on, say, I'm positioned. Come on, for war. Only people who's in the war will position themselves for war. Tell your neighbor, stop being foolish and thinking that you are right when the devil is killing you slowly. Tell your neighbor, shield. My shield, don't give me about that. My shield is very important to unlock what God got for me. Can I say something? Yeah. And the woman God said to you, but you didn't listen. But I'll say it back. Hallelujah. Don't get distracted when you hear other people's testimony. Stay shield. Yeah. Let me say it over here. Yeah. Don't be distracted when you hear other people's testimony. Stay shield. Yeah. You know why? The problem that you don't understand. Anytime the devil trying to deny you from what God got for you, it means that thing that come in your way, I can't, I can't carry it. <laughs> come on, <laughs> come on, a, a, a truck can carry it. Maybe a bulldozer or a, a container can carry your blessing. You are focusing on people's testimony and not understand your next in line. All God wants you to stay shield up and continue decreeing. I'm believing God and the thing will unfold. Come on. I nearly slip into that when I hear everybody testifying and I didn't. I came with the word but never seen it. But I had to stay. And God said, son, because you prove your faith, because the shield represents faith. The shield of faith. What faith does, faith calls things that seem impossible to become possible. Faith calls you to hope and believe and trust God. I see, faith and the word cannot be separated. And at times, listen, clear design this. I told her about the shield and she said, she said, she said, Daddy, I'm going to try in a sword too. But she never knows she was in the realm of the spirit. God, then I understand. Because you need faith 
and you need the word to cause faith. The Bible says faith come by the hearing of the word. See, the shield is not effective without the sword. Because the sword cause the sword cause the word cause faith. Now you get it. So it took, it takes the word to cause faith to activate you to come into what God does for you. So some of you ain't understand, huh? oh God is asking you to have faith and stand on his word and you will see faith and the word produce what God planned for your life. Come on, they, what, they hear me son, they hear me son. Listen to me carefully. It really see your faith protect you. But you need the word to get your faith. Yes. You cannot have faith with a word. No. Come on. The word is what activates faith. Yes. And when the word activates faith, now faith becomes a shield. Yes. Yes. Tell me, come on, son. Yes. See, we have to learn the reason why we ain't seeing stuff because we don't have no word. And if you don't have no word, you don't have no faith. And if you don't have no faith, you can please God. But when you have faith, word and faith, you will please God. The Bible says it's impossible for a man to please God without faith. Come on, now you hear me, church. Come on, tap your neighbor and say, neighbor, you just shift into a next dimension. Your faith has called a shield. The devil will show more death and gas and trouble you. He can't reach you. Read the daughter. Let me tell them about the arm of God and the important. When you hear how the how the, the, the apostle explained this word of faith and the arm of God, you would think that he was focusing on the armor. But when he continued, he said, take up this, the, the shield of faith. Read. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10, 13 to 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand... Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the Lord's people. Listen to me. You cannot be alert without these two. Man. When you listen to the, 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 how he orchestrated and demonstrated and say how the arm of God should be put, you would think that there was, um, uh, uh, Paul was saying, uh, after you don't arm yourself, then you could, these things secondary. No. Because the, the armor is not complete without your shield. The armor is not completed without your sword. Amen. It's one thing having your helmet. It's one thing have on your breastplate. It's one thing to have on your shoes or your boots. But if you don't have weapons, God ain't want you to go out in a warfare and don't have no weapon. Because if you don't have weapon, the enemy will be able to penetrate you with witchcraft. Because you need the shield to protect you. Come on, come on. I want you. I want you to follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. See, the shield is to protect you, but the sword is to kill your enemy. Are you hearing me? See, the shield is to protect you and push your enemy off balance, and the sword is to cut your enemy. Come on. So God expect you that when you fully armor. You have to know how to use these two weapons. Yes. See, the armor is for you, protection. But these are your weapon. Yes. Your shield and sword is a weapon. Yes. Don't go in a warfare and have no weapon. <laughs> 
it don't make no sense going in a war and you are a marine and you got all these nice clothing and boots and, and canteen and, and, and packaged with all your food in and don't have a weapon. A weaponless um, um, soldier is a defeated soldier. Ask your neighbor, are you weaponless? Say, where are your shield? Are your shield? Mm. See, you have to have your shield and you have to have your sword. In, in today, in today army, they got M16, they got um, um, all type of guns and bombs and all kind of stuff. Yes. And when they when they carry these back, they carry a lot. They, they have the buckle and they have all these things hook on to it. Armor. Um, America will never send you in a warfare without your gun. A gunless soldier is a soldier that's practicing suicide. It is the same way in the spiritual realm. A, a Christian uh, who only have on the clothing and don't have the shield and the sword is one that committing suicide. Come into church and don't have your weapon, it's suicide. Come into church and have, I don't have your Bible, it's suicide. Come into church and have, you know, have the word and the conviction and the faith in God's word, it's suicide. Come into church and still gossip him, it's suicide. Come into church and still lost it, it's suicide. Come into church and speaking bad about people, it's witchcraft, it's suicide. Come in did not the Bible say the work of the flesh are these and anyone that practice these shall not inherit the kingdom of God you got to guard yourself shielded that this work of the flesh is not operating in your life tell your neighbor the devil trying to take your key <laughs> Okay, some of you want to know what I'm talking about, princess. They want to know. They want to know. Even the sons and people want to know. What I'm saying to you is that uh, the devil wants your position. This is why you got to heal up. The devil know he don't have no place for inheriting the kingdom of God. You so people are so stupid. The devil jealous you. Even the angel of God don't understand where God is so. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, stop this foolishness. You studying but who ain't like you and who ain't this? Come on, even the angels are mindful. Even the angels them saying, Lord, why, why God is kicking? Why God so fixed on man? Can you tell your neighbor something? Say neighbor, God fixed on you. Neighbor, God minds upon you. Neighbor, God thinks about you. God thinks towards you. According to Jeremiah 29 and 11, he said, my thought towards you is a thought of peace and I expected it. And John 10, they said, I come, the thief coming to steal, kill and destroy, but I came and you might have life and more abundantly. Come on, the devil jealous you. He jealous your position. That way he's after your key and you got to have shield. They want to hear me, my sister Jasmine. They don't want to hear me, elder. They don't want to hear me, precious. They don't want to hear me smiling. I want you to understand something. Can your neighbor, earthy inheritance can't compare to your heavenly inheritance. Okay, they, 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 they come, on, come on, prophet, they didn't hear what's saying. They hear what's saying. They not, come on, come on, woman of God, they hear what's saying. Come on, come on, they hear what's saying. Come on, they hear what's saying. Come on, they ain't hear what's saying. They hear what's saying. Listen, did not Jesus said? What is that? Did the Jesus said to you, I go into a place yes. to prepare a place for you? Yes. In my father's house are many mansions. Yes. It means that you got a mansion with your name on it. Yes. It means that you got a security. It means that you have a dwelling place. Yes. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? Yes. A lot of people did not know Jesus was fully man. Yes. and fully God yes. Jesus took his, uh, his disciples a day and the Bible said Jesus cooked for them yes. so Jesus used to eat food on the earth yes. come on they didn't want to yes. hear this they ain't ready for this yes. it means heaven got stuff yes. I believe the best restaurant
rapture and is in heaven. I believe what you like, God got it in heaven for you. Come on, if you want. <laughs> KFC. KFC. Yeah. I believe up there. I believe, I believe. Don't vex with me my imagination. Huh? I believe it. I believe oxtail is in heaven. Hey! <laughs> fresh in heaven. You look fine in heaven. You ain't need no wig in heaven. So why are you letting the enemy try to make you drop your shield? Connect with us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at JNISKB for information on upcoming events, services, inspirational quotes, and scriptures. Thank you for listening to JMI Connect where we are believing, confessing, and living by the word of God.